Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zeta with you in the secret place where you can be caught up in the counsel of God. And today we're going to be talking about an exciting subject that I love, and that's talking about the spirit of prophecy that comes forth in these times of counsel. And I'm, I'm talking about you. Yeah, you don't have to be an official prophet to prophesy. Did you know that in the scriptures there is a gift of the spirit called the gift of prophecy? And even, even when Moses was confronted because there were a group of people they were prophesying and they ran to Moses. They said, hey, there's a group over there. They're prophesying. And Moses said, I wish that all Israel would prophesy. And so it's the same with Paul in the New Testament. The apostle Paul was saying, listen, when you come together in a public setting, he says, you're all speaking in tongues. He says, but the body, everyone around you is not being edified because they don't understand what you're saying. So he's saying, listen, when you're in a public setting, I would rather you speak something intelligibly in the known language of the group of people. So if you want to speak in tongues in a public place, he said you have to have an interpreter, someone who can interpret the tongues present, or you should just remain silent. Or he said, I would rather that you prophesy. He said, I wish that you would all prophesy so that the whole body would be built up. And so the idea here is that the body is built up and prophecy is part of that in a public setting. However, I have found through the Lord Jesus Christ that also in your personal life, that when you pray in the spirit, that in your spirit, there will be this time coming forth where there'll be an interpretation where you'll start to speak out in your known language or it just comes forth as prophecy. So you can actually speak forth by the Spirit of God in your known language, which is prophecy. So the Spirit wants to say some things. Now this, this is a, a stage that goes beyond you just uh, praying humble prayers. You know, God loves the contrite and, and the humble one. You know, it says in Isaiah that, that he dwells as the high and lofty one. In, in, in Isaiah 57, it says this. It says, the high and lofty one who lives in eternity, the holy one, says this. I live in the high and holy place with those whose spirits are contrite and humble. I restore the crushed spirit of the humble and revive the courage of those with repentant hearts. And so we can be humble and we can be contrite and the spirit of God will come in in that time because we're repentant and he can, he can come in and build us up. Well, that, that's good. But what about when the authority comes in your spirit to where you go in, into prophecy. So I found this out. I actually slipped into this to where I started to have a command about me uh, when I would pray. Now, I wondered at first, why did I get so bold? But see, even in the book of Acts, they prayed for boldness. They prayed for boldness because they were getting persecuted and they asked for boldness that the Lord would anoint them and give them boldness so that they could speak boldly the word of life, the word of truth to the people, the public. And they, that, that boldness caused them to overcome fear. But that boldness that I, I sensed, it was the, the authority of the Holy Spirit. And I, I realized that there was a command about me. And what I mean by that, there was an authority, you know, and I realized like it was amazing to me when, when I used to, to, to have to be armed for my job. It was amazing how because I was armed that I uh, people treated me differently because they treated me with with the, because I had authority. But see, the thing of it was, is I still had that authority but it, it was that visible sign, something else that, it, that showed that I had authority. And it, but in the spirit, I didn't have anything visible to show that I had this authority. It just came to me. I, I, like I said, I slipped into it. And you know what I'm talking about? Like all of a sudden you just find yourself doing something that you tried and tried and tried and you couldn't do. And then one day it just came to you and you can do it. And it, it, it just seemed to come overnight. Well, that's what happened to me in prayer. So the Holy Spirit wants to counsel us in prayer. But when he starts to tell us things, there's a boldness that'll come on us and you get a command about you. And so the Lord says he loves you. Okay, so you hear that and the Lord's counseling you in, in the secret place and he tells you he loves you. He tells you that you're accepted. He tells you that you're not a victim. He tells you that you have all the benefits uh, of a child of God and that the plans and purposes that he has for you are, are so amazing that your mind can't even conceive it right now. But see, what happens if all of a sudden you start to realize, while I have benefits, 
I have benefits in the covenant. And you start to think, I am valuable. I am not a victim. The devil's a victim. See, all these things we've talked about, they start to become so real to you because revelation sets in. And when revelation sets in, all of a sudden, there's a command about you because you're sure of something. It's no longer uh, something you're trying. It's something that you're, you're going to do and implement in your life. That's what I'm talking about with the spirit of prophecy. It's where you get a command about you. And all of a sudden, you know what God's will is. And you start to pray it out, but it's more of a proclaiming. So you start to say, this is what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And you start to prophesy. And the, you can feel the angels. I, I, I sense the angels come into the room. When I'm speaking forth from the Spirit, I'm speaking forth out of maybe the future. But I find that there's so much authority into it that it actually happens. It's something that happens to a believer in the secret place where they receive counsel and they start to see it implemented in their life. So what will happen with you is, is as you progress and you mature, you start to consider and you, you realize, wow, this, this stuff that God's saying about me is amazing. And I really am a child of God. I have benefits. And all of a sudden you find yourself caught up. Now, now, John was in the spirit on the Lord's day on the Isle of Patmos. He was caught up and in some translations say he was wrapped up and taken into the spirit. Now, I've had this happen many times, but but I feel like right now talking to you, I feel that that same thing happening to me. I have the reality that I am I'm seeing people set free in my lifetime because the Lord sent me back to speak to this generation. So I was in the future and I was shown all the needs that are here in this generation. And Jesus asked me to come back and speak to this generation. And I said, Lord, they don't see their need. They don't see their condition. They're lukewarm, but they don't even know it. And you can't even tell them they're lukewarm. And Jesus said, you must go back and speak to this generation. And I said, well, how am I going to even show them their need? They, they feel like they're well-dressed, they're doing well, that they're, they're prosperous, that they can see. And, you know, just like, like uh, Jesus was talking to the, the church in the book of Revelation in the Laodicean church, he, they were lukewarm. They, they, he said, um, if, you'll, if you would ask me, I would give you these things. He said, you, you think you're well clothed, but you're really naked. You think you can see, but you're blind. You know, you think that you're, you're prosperous, but you're poor. And he said, here's the solution. You ask me and I will give you a robe of righteousness. You ask me and I'll give you eye salve for your eyes so that you can see. And he said, and you ask me and I will give you gold that's been tried in the fire. You see, Jesus said they don't know their need, but you have to present that need to them. You've got to tell them that they're lukewarm. You've got to tell them the solution. You've got to say here, this is what the Lord is going to do if you ask him. So that's what he was doing to the church in the book of Revelation. So the spirit of God is saying that to all of us all the time in the, in the secret place, in the council room. He's trying, he's, he's wanting to get over to us our need. So he, Jesus said to me, if I send you back, he said, you're going to speak and you're going to reroute people's lives. By, by what you say. And I, I said, what, what does that mean? And he said, well, he said, by my spirit, you're going to speak. And when you speak, he said, the path that they had chosen for themselves, they're going to immediately know that that's their path and not my path. And, and he said, you're going to be sent to them. And he said, you'll speak. And he said, it'll start to steer them. And he said, you will see people's destinies. He said, they will change. They will be rerouted and they'll finish just fine. He said, but if you had not come back and spoken to them, they would not know their need and they would not have made the course corrections that were needed and they wouldn't have finished right. And I thought, it, it, you know, it could it be that easy because, you know, when I'm in heaven with Jesus, everything sounds easy. But I said, Lord, you know, well, how do you speak to a generation that doesn't see their need? They, they're self-sufficient. They, 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 don't, they don't act like they need you desperately. See, I saw that I needed every breath. I, it was a gift. I, I was, my breath was taken away from me when I died on the operating table. I went to heaven and I couldn't get back in my body. I didn't know how to get back in. Jesus took me. And I realized that every breath was a gift. I, I realized every day I wake up, it's a gift. Every day. I, I think about God giving me another day, I, another breath. 
And I realized that that's how life is supposed to be with Jesus. But if we don't realize that, if we don't realize that John 15 is true, that, that Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. You know, if you don't, you don't know that until you've died and you've gone on and you realize that I had all this given to me every day, but I didn't thank God for it. And I didn't recognize it. I, it was a gift just to have another day. And you don't realize that. Well, I'm, I'm, I've come back to tell you that each day is a gift and that everything that God has for you is, is set in order for you to accomplish. That the Spirit of God is right there willing to counsel you in the secret place and to implement these things into your life. However, how do you get to a place where you totally depend upon him? Have you ever thought about like, oh, you know, you just, you just have to depend upon God. You just, you just put your life in his hands and, and, and just trust him. You know, that's easy to say, but walking it out in the reality of this world, it's a fallen world. And the world doesn't help you to do this. You're going to have to be very focused on your mission and what God has called you to do. So you need to know what God's will is. God is going to come in and help you, but you got to ask him. So the spirit of God is, is speaking these things to this generation. He's saying, you have needs that you don't even know you have. You need to ask me for the solution to it. Just like he did in the book of Revelation, the spirit of God was speaking to the churches and Jesus was trying to get across to the churches what their need was. And he said, he who has ears to hear, hear what the spirit of God is saying. He said that continually throughout this, this whole section talking to the churches in chapter 2 and chapter 3 of the book of Revelation. Jesus constantly said that to John. He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. So in other words, it's possible that people weren't hearing. In fact, he had to send John to write a letter to the pastor or the, the head of, that, of the seven churches because the Spirit of God was saying things, but they weren't hearing. And so John had to write these letters and, and God was using John to do that. But the Spirit wants to reveal your need in the secret place. He wants to counsel you. And so there, there's this process that you've got to turn it over in your heart and then you've got to listen for instruction because what he's saying is, is the path that you've chosen is not the right path. You have to be humble and know that you've got to accept that. So God only dwells with the humble and the contrite in spirit. And it says that those who have repentant hearts. So that's the formula for God coming in and helping people. So Jesus told me, he said, when you go back, he said, let the Holy Spirit guide you, but you're going to speak prophetically from a place of command. And he said, I'm going to actually come and stand beside you and tell you in your ear what you're supposed to say. As you hear that, just repeat it and you'll watch people's lives being rerouted. That's because I'm speaking out of my spirit. So in prayer, I wanted to relay this to you today in prayer, in the secret place, the Holy Spirit will start to rise up in you to where you start to prophesy. You'll start to speak by the Spirit and you'll be proclaiming. It's no longer a request. So do you understand there's a difference between asking God for something and actually proclaiming what the Lord is doing or saying? You become prophetic. In other words, there's an utterance that comes, but with that, there's a boldness. So many of you, I know that you're on the edge of this because the Lord's having me speak on this. And so this, this session is for you when you're praying in the spirit and you start to get bold, you start to feel an utterance coming out, then you need to learn to yield to that boldness and start saying it and saying, Lord, I know you want to move. So Lord, just move by your spirit. That's what you start saying. Lord, I know you want to heal people. You're willing. So just begin. We're just release that healing power. I want to see people healed. Lord, I know you want people delivered. I know that you want to destroy the works of the devil that is in people's lives. So by your spirit, I just proclaim that the spirit of God is driving out the devil by the name of Jesus, that the blood of Jesus begin to work. And as you start to proclaim these things, prayer becomes something of a command. So you start to command these things to come to pass. There's a boldness. It's, pro it's prophecy. 
but it's prophecy with boldness that, that it is, goes beyond request. So do you understand the word ask in the Bible? When it says ask and you re shall receive, the word there is, is more of the demand, demand and you shall receive. In other words, God has already given it to you. The devil is holding it back. That's the idea there. So it's ask and you shall receive or demand what has been given to you and it shall, you shall receive it. Knock and the door shall be opened. In other words, you knock because the door will be opened and then you seek because you're going to find. You seek knowing you're going to find. It's not a stab in the dark, so to speak. So the Spirit of the Lord starts to switch your prayer over to prophetic, to where you start prophesying to your world. You start to frame your world by words, but it's from the Spirit of God proclaiming. Now, I remember the Spirit of God telling me things out of my mouth, and none of that was happening at the time. And then it started to happen. So I started to realize as I started to, to mature in this area, I started to tell the Spirit of God that he had total permission to, to pick me up and take him wherever, take me wherever he wanted me to go. So he would actually take me places. He would actually show me in prayer what I was supposed to pray, pray for, actually show me people that I hadn't met yet. He would show me situations where I would address it, and then later I would find out about that situation, and it had resolved. So I'm listening to this person tell a story about God delivering them and helping them, but they didn't know that weeks before, the Holy Spirit had taken me up in the Spirit and shown me that very thing. And so there is this realm of the Spirit where it's prophetic. In other words, you have eagle eyes. You can see into the Spirit. And, and, the, and, and in this in this place there is no doubt there is no fear do you realize that that there is a place in the spirit that you can mature to where you don't fear you don't doubt anymore and as the angel of the lord surrounds you right now i'm speaking to you prophetically right now and the angel of the lord is visiting many of you right now and you're you're feeling the confirmation because you're feeling the holiness of an angel beside you right now the power of the holy spirit i'm being visited by an angel right now as i'm speaking to you there is, there is one directly in my vicinity right now. And the, there's this place that, that you can go in the spirit where you have no doubt and you have no fear and you're not requesting anymore. So what happens if you start to have a command about you to where you say, you know what, we're not going to have it any other way except God's way. And God's way is, is that the devil has to leave. He has no way of getting to me anymore because the angel of the Lord is surrounding me. He's encamped around me. Nothing shall by any means harm me or touch me. That's the promise of God in Psalms 91. That's the secret place. He, the angels on special orders will come and lift you up so that nothing will harm you or touch you. That is what the truth is in heaven. This is because you step into this place where there's a command about you. So what is it that the Spirit of the Lord was wanting to say through you? What is it that because you are a human being that has given yourself over to the Lord and you were legally born here because, because you were born through a mother's womb, you are a, officially a human being and you've been born the right way through a, a mother's womb and the devil took this world and he wasn't born as a human being. He just took it from man. So he is illegally in charge and now through Jesus Christ, we can take it back. So what we do is with the name of Jesus, we invoke the covenant. So out of our spirit, it's no longer requesting the devil to do something. It's commanding him in the name of Jesus, and he must do it. So he must allow you the rights that Jesus Christ has given you, and he must relinquish them. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because prayer becomes this command in the spirit where you prophesy to your world. It's no longer requesting. So, so I'm, I'm believing God is touching you. But see, the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is saying, I need them, you, to speak the words of God in authority by the name of Jesus because you're a human being. You're a, you're a human being that's been bought by the blood of Jesus. And you need to speak the name of Jesus 
against the enemy and he's going to let go. I'm telling you by the power and the, and the Holy Spirit is speaking prophetically through me right now. You need to take command of your destiny because God has already written it. But I'm telling you, he dwells with the humble and the meek, the people that need God, the ones who with, that know that without him, you can do nothing. That's you. You need to allow the spirit of God to come upon you and the power of the Holy Spirit to speak through you. And it's not a request, it's a command. So there is this time in your prayer time, in your counseling time with the Lord, where a com this command will come out of you. You need to yield to that and say, you know what, devil? We're not gonna have it your way. We're gonna have it God's way. And I'm just gonna tell you what God's doing. God is setting people free. God is healing people. And you just start to tell them, you're being driven out. You have been destroyed. You have been, you've come to nothing. As Paul said, he's made a show of them openly triumphing over him in the cross. That's, that's what we tell this Satan. That's what we tell our enemy. And the Spirit of the Lord will confirm this with signs and wonders. So when we speak the word, when we preach the word, the Holy Spirit will confirm it with signs and wonders falling. So I, I believe that this is helping you. The, the power of the Holy Spirit is really, really strong right now. And so I want to prophetically tell you that you can actually point to your children. You can speak to their pictures. And you can command those evil spirits to let go of your children. You can speak to your loved ones. You can speak to your boss in the spirit. You, you could just, in prayer, you, there's a command that comes about you. And you just say, you know what, devil? You can't have my, my loved ones. You can't have my family. You let go of these people and you have a command about you. And you can start to speak to your car. If you, if you need a new car, your car is falling apart. The Spirit of God will have you speak and say, you know what, I'm just believing for provision. God's going to give me a brand new car. He's going to do it. He's going to get all the glory for it. And you just start to speak to your circumstances and say, I'm not putting any more money into this old car. I'm going to believe. I'm, the, I'm believing, Lord. I'm speaking it out of my spirit. And you begin to prophesy. I have seen the Spirit speaking things ahead of time and seen them happen. So just trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he's going to direct your paths. Just remember, there is a, there's a power right now. Just yield to it. Just stretch your hands out. Just stretch your hands out right now and receive this. There is a fire from heaven right now manifesting. It's touching you right now. It's going through your arms, all through your body. Just start to yield to the Spirit right now and say, Lord, you know what? I yield to you. You are the God of victory and you have come into my environment right now and you are going to destroy the works of the enemy. You already have. So you yield to the Spirit right now. Just that's it. Just, just start to worship God right in your house, right now, right where you are, right where you are. You're being set free right now. And there's many people, even even arthritis in your knees. I see people with knees, arthritis. There's all kinds of, of issues that are being resolved right now in your bones, in your joints, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for healing the people. Thank you for joining me on the show.